Hello Internet, I'm called Matt, and uh, this is a bit of a different one. So I had two different people uh, offer to send me screeners of their movie within like a week of each other, which, which is so wild to me. Like the first one I was like, oh, someone wants to send me their movie? That's a little weird, but okay, sure, I'll take a look. And then the second one emails me, and within within a week, and I'm like, did I do something to make people think I, I wanted their movies? I, <laughs> I, I, nothing I have said prior, I think, would lead people to like, oh, that guy wants to review my movies. But <laughs> here we are, uh, two different people... I presume independent of each other. If these two are in cahoots, uh, I couldn't find any evidence of it. Not that I looked very hard. I, I just kind of trust that they aren't. It, it is two very different movies, so I, I assume uh, the two are not related. <laughs> so the first movie that was sent to me is a film called Cowboy.mov from uh, Sean Taylor Nelson, I hope. That is actually his name. Let me double check. Sean Nelson Taylor. I got the names out of order. Uh, Cowboy.mov is a film written, directed by, and starring uh, Sean Nelson Taylor. Uh, it, it, it's his feature film debut. Um, it's about this sort of redneck backwoods guy... Uh, he's working a dead-end job, work, working a dead-end fast food job. He problems with the ex-wife, barely gets to see his son. The, the son sends him a, a webcam so that he can, like, record videos for the son. And so he, he records a video of himself uh, doing a funny dance and puts it up on YouTube. And of course, of course it goes viral. It's a big, huge hit. And I see this happening in the trailer. I watched the trailer before I watched the movie. And I'm like, wow, that's not an original story at all. I really don't want to have to be mean to this guy. But that's just like the first 20 minutes. After that, it diverts into a completely different story. Because after that, he uses his fame and his anonymity to start like a political talk show. And it becomes commentary on, like, these crazy right-wing, uh, internet personalities. The, the Alex Jones, Steven Crowder types. There's even a scene that I think is supposed to be a parody of uh, Ben Shapiro's terrible BBC interview. I, I want to say up front, I did enjoy the movie pretty well. It's, it's well made. It, I got some laughs out of it. There's a lot to praise here. But if I'm talking about the plot, the one big criticism I have of the movie is that it's just a little unfocused. Like, the whole political angle doesn't come in until, like, the 25-30 minute mark. So it's, it's sort of out of left field when, when that happens. And... It goes some very odd places before the end of the movie. And it feels like it doesn't stick with any one idea long enough to really say that much about it. Like, is this a story about a guy in a bad situation who sees a way out and takes it and then just spirals out of control running over all of his friends and family on on this pursuit of a way out of his situation? Is it commentary on internet fame? Is it commentary on internet far-right pundits and the wild shit they say? So I, I think you can have all three in the movie, but you need to pick one and really work on that, and just have the other two sort of in the peripherals, right? You, you can do... You, you can focus on one while still commenting on the others. As is, I sort of feel like I, I don't quite get enough of all three. Like, the, the movie is 
too evenly split between those ideas that it, it never comes to a good resolution on any of them. And, and I don't think that ruins the movie. I do think what's there is good. I just, I would like more of it. Uh, that's really my only problem with the movie. There's a lot I really like about this movie. I really like Travis and uh, HL, the two main characters of the film. I was real worried they were going to be these, like, pale, uh, redneck stereotypes, and it's just a bunch of dumb redneck jokes. Ha ha, look at them dumb hicks. HL gives off some real Dale Gribble vibes pretty early on, but I think they're both fleshed out enough characters that they're more than just a stereotype. Like, there's more to these characters than just a joke. They are not just joke characters. These are, like, actual people with actual things going on in their lives. They, they have thoughts and feelings about stuff uh, more than just for comedic purposes. Um, they, they remind me of, like, people I have actually known. People in my own family, honestly. They, these remind me of people I am related to. I have known these people. I am related to these people. Honestly, something else I wish I could have gotten more of is, like, I, I'd like to see more of, like, Travis worrying about his son. Because it's his son that sort of kickstarts this whole escapade. But then we don't actually ever see his son in the movie we see pictures of him but he never like appears on screen and i would have liked maybe a scene where travis reconciles with his son or, or more of him like being worried about his son that's a minor problem i don't think you need that for the movie to work it's just something i would have liked to see more of i i, I think there's something really good going on with Travis and his son. So I, I think that would have been something worthy of more focus. I should mention, while we're talking about Travis, uh, Sean Taylor, Sean Nelson Taylor, let me get his name right since he sent me his film for free. Sean Nelson Taylor um, is a really good actor. He's a really good actor. He's got a lot of energy. Because you, you get skeptical of these, like, no-budget indie productions where, like, the writer, director, and star are all the same person. It's like, okay, you cast yourself to save money. But no, I, I think uh, Sean, Sean Nelson Taylor really brings a lot to the role. He's got a lot of energy. He's a very entertaining personality. He, he really makes the character work. Um, I, I couldn't say if he was just, like, a good actor or if he wrote a script that played to his strengths. But either way, I, I think he did really well in this movie. Oh boy, I am gonna say this wrong. Tim... I want to say Keeley. Tim Keeley? Maybe Tim Kiley. Uh, as HL. He also does a really good job. He's very entertaining in this. From what I can tell, this is his only movie, but... I, I look forward to seeing him in other stuff. Uh, I, I don't know where they shot this. I think at one point they say it takes place in Minnesota. I'm not sure if it was shot in Minnesota or not. But they do a real good job of capturing, like, small town but not that small town America. Like, it's, it's not the country. It's not the sticks. But it's also not, like, the big city or even the suburbs. It's just, you know, these small towns that are, like, a handful of fast food places and some gas stations, and, and that's all that's there. That's just, that's the whole town. I, I don't see that depicted a lot in film, and, and this movie does a really good job capturing the heart of that. The, the main character even works at Dairy Queen. Uh, they don't call it Dairy Queen, it's, it's Lactose King. I can't possibly figure out what that's a reference to. They even shoot a lot of it in an actual Dairy Queen. And you can see the Dairy Queen logo in a couple of places. I, I don't consider that a problem at all. I think it's more charming that way. 
Um, although, they did put some effort into the Lactose King branding. There's a scene where Travis is filling up a cup, and it's an actual, like, Lactose King, uh, paper cup. Where I, I think a lot of productions, especially lower production, low, lower budget productions like this one, would have used, like, a completely plain paper club cup, just pure white. They, they went out and printed the, the... Lactose King logo on this paper cup. And it's like, okay, they really went out of their way to, like, make sure you know this is Lactose King. Even in the handful of shots, you can see the Dairy Queen logo. It feels so authentic. It feels like, yeah, that's what... not quite small town America is like. It's all Dairy Queens. That's the only place you'll find a Dairy Queen. There's no Dairy Queens in the suburbs. There's no Dairy Queens in the city. There's no Dairy Queens in the country. It's it's just these, like, like smaller towns that have Dairy Queens in them. So I it, it feels very authentic to me. I, I it, There's a real heart to this movie, both... Both in terms of its characters and the struggles they go through and the locations this film has, it's, it's really representative of, like, a, a specific place and a specific people. On the technical side of things, it's also a very well-made movie, especially for a feature film debut. Uh, I don't know what the budget on this was. I assume very, very low. But for a very, very low budget, this looks close to professional. It's like low budget professional? If if you catch what I mean, like this is not this, this is not like a Marvel movie or anything. This is, this is clearly very low budget, but you know, it, it passes for like moderately popular indie movie. You know, I, I could see, like, if, if there were a couple more celebrities in this movie, that wouldn't surprise me at all. The only real celebrity in the movie is Charles Barkley, and I'm almost certain they just paid him on cameo because he has, like, two lines in the film. But other, other than Charles Barkley's very brief cameo, uh, there's no celebrities in this film. But, you know, it feels like if celebrities showed up in this film... They would not feel out of place. It wouldn't be like, oh, what are they doing on something this low budget? It's like, no, this looks really good. It looks really well made. There's a really trippy sequence near the end of the film, and I am certain that is just Sean showing off his capabilities as a director. It's like, hey, you want to see what crazy shit I can do? Here you go. And it's like, you know what? The first feature film indie director, go ahead, show off, get that next job, because it's really impressive. It it's a really impressive sequence. Uh, it's it really highlights uh, Sean Sean Taylor Nelson as a. I said it wrong again. I keep putting Nelson at the end. Sean Nelson Taylor as. A good director. He's he he knows what he's doing. He he can do some really impressive things when he tries. So yeah, I I look forward to whatever Mr. Taylor has coming out next because he he did a really good job with this one. Uh, the story I think is the weak point, and even that I think is, you know, it's, it's a decent enough story. There's plenty going on. It held my attention. Um. Yeah, this, this was a good movie. This was really good, especially especially considering the context. Now, e even, even if this weren't a freshman project, even if this weren't some guy making this probably nearly entirely on his own with, like, maybe a handful of friends, um, e even ignoring the context, it's, it's a decent movie. Like, it's, this is not, this is not decent for a tiny production. This is like, this is a good movie on its own, you know, without the context that it is this small of a production. Compared to, you know, the other stuff that's being made like this, 
it's exceptional. It's it's like one of the best movies like this I've seen, probably. So yeah, I I would generally recommend this. At the very least, just to support an independent filmmaker. Like, the, the 2010s were very good for independent film, but uh, the 2020s are not looking as hot. So, I, I would recommend looking into this film when it comes out. It is not currently out. My understanding is that it's sort of doing the, the film circuit right now, the film festival circuit right now. I asked Sean where the best place to keep up with, like, updates regarding this movie to see when it's out and where it's out. Uh, and he said the cowboy.mov Instagram page, uh, at cowboy underscore mov. Let me sh make sure that's correct. Yes, at cowboy underscore mov on Instagram. Uh, I will put a link to it down there, I guess. Uh, so keep, keep an eye on it. I, I, I would encourage you to take a look at it when it comes out. It's a movie with a lot of heart, a lot of charm. It's it's very well made. Um, so, yeah. Good movie. Good work, Sean. Uh, the other film that was sent to me, very different film, from a gentleman named Forrest McCuller. Uh, it's a documentary called The Fortune Tellers about a group of boys who, you know, sort of met, like, elementary school, maybe middle school, uh, met when they were pretty young, made a bunch of, like, weird home videos together, started a band that made, like, weird, kind of terrible music, uh, and really just did it all to amuse themselves. It's a really funny, relatable story. Uh, I am very similarly a kid who made a lot of weird home videos, and I, I do a lot of things with my friends that are for our amusement and absolutely no one else's. Just shit no one else will ever care about except us. In in high school, I drew a comic about me and my friends as superheroes, and, like, every villain was a fucking inside joke. And I, there is good stuff in there. I, I We did, like, parodies of... It was sort of a, a play on, like, the absurdity of comic books. Some of the weird shit that they try to pull off. Because we had a bunch of, like, weird timeline bullshit that didn't make any sense. And then currently I'm working on Caillou the New Adventures. Don't ask. So yeah, me and my friends have never made it to the extremes that these guys went to. They did some, like, really out there shit, but, like... I've done dumb shit like this before. Stuff that is purely for me and my friend's amusement and no one else's. So yeah, it's it's a fun, charming story. Um, this is not really a movie so much as it is uh, a six-part miniseries. And that leads me to my biggest criticism of this project. It is too goddamn long. It's like three and a half hours, and, and I'm going to be completely honest, I did not watch all three and a half hours. I, I skimmed a couple episodes. The interviews in the film were clearly shot like a long time ago. I would guess the early aughts, if not the late 90s. But it's, it's sort of an interview with uh, the, the members of the Fortune Tellers. That was the name of their band. The members of the fortune tellers sort of reunited and they all got interviewed around that time. And I, I have to assume like every second of usable footage from those interviews is in this project because it's three and a half hours and it does not need to be that long. Like this would be like an interesting sort of, I don't know, director's cut or extended edition for people who really wanted to do a deep dive on the topic. But uh, if you want to make something more accessible, I, I think this would make a great documentary if it were like an hour and a half, maybe two hours. It needs to be like fast and punchy. This is a slog. This, this just drags 
on and on and on and I'm like, man, there's parts of this I really like, but it's so long and so slow. Like I said, you can take this footage and make a much better movie out of it. Make a, a, a very fascinating, very quick, like, hour and a half, two hour long movie, and that'd be great. That would be an amazing documentary. I would love the hell out of it. Um, <laughs> this is, this is too much. This is too much to hold my interest all the way through. That's really the only thing I think I can criticize, because this is a documentary that is made, I think, entirely of pre-existing footage. Uh, the, the interview with them is clearly, like, two decades, maybe even two and a half decades old. So, while I, a lot of the interviews are really poorly shot, they have an interview with a guy while he's, like, eating dinner... And it keeps fading between shots because he's sitting there, like, eating his food while he's talking. And it's like, they're, they're cutting out all of him, like, chewing and swallowing and, and then saying the next thing he wanted to say. But I can't really give the filmmakers too much shit for that because they're working with what they have. Uh, so, really, this is a, a movie that comes down to the editing and... It needs to be shorter and faster paced. That is my one and only criticism of this. If you think you have the resolve to sit through three and a half hours of it, or if you just kind of want to skip around, skim the whole thing, which I would kind of recommend. It's a really fascinating story. I really enjoyed parts of this. Um, it's just, you know, it's, it's a lot to watch. But if you want to watch it, I will also have a link to where this is available down in the comments. This one has been released. You can watch it now. And and I, I do look forward to seeing what Forrest McCuller comes up with next because this is a really interesting story. So I, I, I trust him to find other interesting stories. Yeah, those are uh, the two movies that I got sent by the filmmakers. Um, don't expect this ever again. Um, I mean, you can send me your movies if you want, but I, I make no promises about reviewing them. I'll review them if they're interesting, but if you send me a movie, I, I do not promise I am going to make a video on it. Uh, for Sean and Forrest, thank you very much for your contributions. Uh, I, I hope I wasn't too hard on either of you, because I did enjoy both of these very well. Uh, some, some minor issues I had with both of them, but overall I think these are two talented filmmakers who, who have a lot, uh, have, have a lot to look forward to. There's, there's a lot of potential with both of these guys, and I, I look forward to their next projects. Until then, have a nice day.